Hi everyone, this is Josh with Lindsay Wildlife Experience out here in Lindsay Wildlife's Nature Cove. I'm on a mission today. I am looking underneath logs. It's more exciting than it sounds. I'm actually looking for different types of species under these logs because, I mean, underneath a log, that's, that's an entire habitat for a lot of different critters. I'm sure there's a lot of cool stuff I will find, so let's check it out. first critters I see right away are familiar ones. Pill bugs. Now, even though we call them pill bugs, they aren't insects. Believe it or not, they are actually crustaceans, just like crabs and lobsters. Unlike their distant ocean-dwelling cousins, pill bugs are terrestrial, meaning that they live on the land. Despite being terrestrial, they still have gills meaning that they need to live in moist environments to be able to breathe. This is why we often find them underneath wet logs, like the one I'm looking under right now. I'm on to the next log and I find something incredibly cool. Slender salamanders. Several of them underneath one log. Slender salamanders are amphibians, and similar to pill bugs, they need to stay moist in order to breathe air. Unlike pill bugs, they don't have gills, at least not as adults. They don't have lungs either. They breathe through their skin. Their skin is very thin, and when it's wet, it's perfect for absorbing oxygen. I also find a spider, a slug, and a snail too. Now it's on to the next one. And it looks like we have another slender salamander. This one looks like it's pretty big too. Now if you look closely at the sides of the slender salamander, you will notice little lines. These are called costal grooves, and these grooves help transport water across the salamander's body ensuring that the salamander stays moist for survival. And apparently, salamanders strive to be pretzels? Wow, science is amazing. Let's see what's under this one. Oh, it's a ground beetle. Did you know that beetles are the largest group of animals on the planet? Let's do some trivia. Approximately how many species of beetle have been discovered so far? If you said D, 350,000, then you are correct. The crazy part, there are probably still millions of more species yet to be discovered. And here we have, oh, it's our charming little friend, the earthworm. Okay, so maybe earthworms aren't the most exciting animals to find, but let's not forget how important they are. As decomposers, they help turn dead stuff back into rich soil. You know what? Earthworms, you're the real MVPs. But it just keeps getting cooler, because I then find a centipede. I believe it to be some kind of soil centipede. Centi literally translates to 100, so it's a common myth that all centipedes have 100 legs. But this simply isn't true. It depends on the species, but some centipedes can have as little as 30 legs, while others can have over 300. And as proof, underneath the same log I find a different centipede with less legs than the other. And speaking of legs, I also found a millipede. Millipedes are awesome too. One species found in California can have up to 750 legs, the most legs of any known animal on the planet. But what's the difference between centipedes and millipedes? They're different critters, but they look very similar. Let's take a look. First off is the legs. Centipedes have one pair of legs per segment of their body. The legs also come out of their sides. Millipedes, on the other hand, have two pairs of legs per body segment. 
their legs come out from beneath them. Another difference is that centipedes are predators. They have pincers and venom to kill their prey. Millipedes, however, are herbivorous, eating only vegetation and other decaying matter. They do not hunt, which makes them a lot slower. Under the same log, I find some more pill bugs. These ones are rolled up in balls for protection. Under this log, I find a species of camel cricket, named after its striking resemblance to camels. Okay, maybe not so much. Actually named after the humped backs that many species of camel cricket have. Oh, and check out the spines on those legs. Here is another interesting find, an earwig. Now that name comes from a myth that earwigs like to crawl into people's ears. But don't worry, this is nothing but a tall tail. Their preferred space is a dark, moist area where there is plenty of dead vegetation and smaller insects to consume. As I look closer, I see something I didn't notice before. The earwig is guarding a clutch of eggs. This is amazing. Earwig females are surprisingly maternal. They will guard their eggs and stay with their offspring for a short period of time after hatching. This is very uncommon in the insect world, making earwigs quite unusual, yet special. Despite their bad reputation, earwigs are truly interesting little critters. Those holes might be a clue to what we'll find next. Termites. You may be wondering why these termites don't have wings. And that's because not all termites have wings. These are worker termites. Their job is to collect food for the colony and to help build and maintain the nest. A lot of their time is spent in the ground, so wings aren't very necessary. I'm on to my last log for the day, so hopefully we'll find something good. And here we have a colony of ants. Now, ants are similar to worms. We don't really think too much of them. We see them so often. But in a way, ants are inspiring. Each ant in the colony has a role, and together they work to make sure the colony stays alive, safe, and well-fed. They may just be bugs, but we can learn a thing or two from ants. It's remarkable that so much diversity can be found in such a small place. In just this one area, there are so many different worlds and many different species. Each one of them is unique. In a world full of skyscrapers, snow-capped mountains, and seemingly endless oceans, we forget that we ourselves are giant. And with each step we take, we pass by entire habitats. Nature isn't just in the Amazon rainforest or the African savanna. Nature is everywhere. Sometimes you just have to look a little closer to find it.